Our question is about the patients who are not indicated for hysteroscopy. Those without history, without uh, 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 with negative history or negative signs or symptoms, negative ultrasound finding and suspected uterine uh, pathology. Uh, this uh, in our A, uh, is our A. Uh, historically, there are uh, conflicting uh, data regarding the benefit of doing routine hysteroscopy uh, for all women who are uh, to undergo IVF. Current guideline is nice, don't advocate the routine uh, use of screening hysteroscopy during uh, the initial uh, infertility workup. ECMAR in 2020 said that uh, uh, if hysteroscopy were to be routinely performed in all IVF cases, the global implications are uh, catastrophic. Uh, thus, our recommendation should be uh, right. Uh, so, the information that we need to know are there enough studies which uh, definitely confirm that hysteroscopy will improve outcome? Uh, do uh, all identi identified uterine pathologies that were missed by sonography require hysteroscopic surgery to improve outcome? And finally, does uh, diagnostic hysteroscopy in IVA patient without uterine pathology result in improved outcome? Uh, so it, Let's go to the first question. Is there uh, definite evidence on the, uh, on the advantage of uh, routine hysteroscopy before the first IVF? There are a lot of studies regarding the benefit or uh, the non-benefit of screening hysteroscopy before IVF. Uh, but critical appraisal of published scientific uh, uh, articles to ethically choose the correct articles we need to uh, eliminate of bias, uh, or, or with a lot of bias, uh, reliable evidence with good evidence such as randomized control trial and systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, acceptable studies uh, dealing with screening hysteroscopy for first uh, IVF included three meta-analysis and randomized controlled trials with, uh, without a question of uh, bias. This is the, uh, the first uh, meta-analysis uh, published in Cochrane Library 2019. Uh, the conclusion of this study is that performing a screening hysteroscopy for IVF uh, may increase uh, like their trade. Uh, pooling results from trial at low risk of bias showed no increase in like their trade following uh, screening hysteroscopy. So at present, no high quality evidence to support the routine use of hysteroscopy as a screening tool in subfertile women with a normal ultrasound or uh, hysterosalpingogram in the basic workup for improving reproductive success rate. Uh, going to the other uh, meta-analysis by uh, Spaceview, uh, Sardo et al., uh, the relative risk is not significant, 1.44. Uh, and this systematic review and meta-analysis of published studies suggest that hysteroscopy in uh, asymptomatic women prior to uh, their first IVF cycle uh, could be associated with improved outcome, but robust uh, and high quality randomized trial to confirm this finding are needed to, to guide a clinical uh, practice. Now, in uh, this study, uh, uh, of uh, Bander, Bander uh, then if you go uh, down the different randomized control trials and beta analysis, you will see the majority of them have a question with uh, regard to uh, 
the possibility of bias uh, in allocation, uh, concealment, on attribution, uh, on attribution bias, etc. Uh, the only randomized controlled trial with a very good uh, rating uh, in item of absence of bias is Smith uh, study or inside uh, study published in 2016 which have a very high quality evidence with similar outcome for both hysteroscopy and non hysteroscopy group. Going uh, to other randomized controlled trial and meta-analysis, all of them suggest robust and high quality randomized trial to confirm this finding uh, are needed to guide the clinical uh, practice. So, regarding the question one, uh, is there definite evidence uh, on the advantage uh, of routine hysteroscopy for first IVF, the answer uh, is no. Uh, the second question, do all identified uterine factors that were uh, initially missed uh, by ultrasound require hysteroscopy surgery to improve outcome? The proposed uh, mechanism of hysteroscopy to improve outcome uh, may be allow detection uh, and the treatment of these intrauterine pathology, which may improve IVF outcome, cervical dilatation for embryo transfer and local uh, endometrial injury. We will discuss. Uh, we will discuss the most common pathologies in uh, the, uh, the first point. Uh, in the endometrial polyp, there is a good evidence that hysteroscopic polyptomy is uh, the gold standard treatment. Uh, SUOG uh, uh, committee opinion uh, recommended that uh, office hysteroscopy for the treatment of endometrial polyp should be considered whenever possible. Uh, and uh, for hysteroscopic myomectomy uh, is indicated for uh, intracavitary uh, myoma and submocus myoma having at least 50% of their volume within the uterine cavity. This is the FIGO uh, recommendation. And the classification uh, of European Society of Gynecology is I Now, uh, Hysteroscopic, uh, what about uh, hysteroscopic sympt uh, symptoplasty, which is still controversial, but uh, is the uh, practice committee guidelines state that it may be reasonable uh, to perform a septal incision in patient with uh, more than 1.5 uh, long. Uh, more evidence for the same conclusion. Now, uh, about uh, chronic uh, endometritis, which remains controversial, uh, with difficult diagnosis, even histology uh, can miss it. Now, and uh, about intrauterine senecia, hysteroscopy uh, is the method of uh, choice for uh, diagnosis. Uh, it seems to be clear that these pathologies, when detected, will improve outcome when hysteroscopic surgery will be uh, done. This is the summary of the studies. So, uh, for, for question uh, number two, uh, do all identify uterine pathology that uh, were initially missed by ultrasound require hysteroscopic surgery to improve outcome? The uh, answer is yes, even with lack of randomized controlled trial and treatment of say, uh, some uterine pathologies or lesions. The question three, does the diagnostic uh, hysteroscopy in IV patient without pathology result in improved, uh, improved outcome? The, uh, here, there was no available uh, studies. And when we, uh, uh, and what about individual scratching? Uh, when we uh, review this strategy for unselected sub uh, fertile women generally benefit less uh, from individual scratching? 
latest data from ISHRI 2018 uh, recommended methods should be uh, abandoned, especially after publishing the randomized control trial in New England Journal of Medicine with the same recommendation. So the answer of question number three, uh, does diagnostic hysteroscopy in IVF patients without pathology result in improved outcome? No current evidence. So once again, once again uh, we go to this illustration. We are not uh, uh, recommending routine hysteroscopy for uh, this huge majority who will be made the undergo an unnecessary uh, hysteroscopy without any indication. Uh, however, we do aim improved history taking, improved ultrasound skills to decrease the chance of missing uterine lesion than, uh, that may otherwise affect outcome, avoid unnecessary invasive procedure. Uh, so when you do this, you possi possibly expand the uh, indicated list by medical history taken for uh, risk factor and better ultrasound will, uh, while uh, awaiting robust data. Now, does routine hysteroscopy for risk recurrent implantation failure improve reproductive outcome? Let's go to the literature reviewing the systematic review published in RBM online and showed uh, benefit from outpatient hysteroscopy in improving, improving pregnancy rate in uh, the subsequent IVF cycle. But how good is this evidence? Small number of randomized trial available, methodological limitations, no blinding, etc., and limited live birth date in risk patients. Uh, then another multi center uh, randomized control trial about uh, hysteroscopy and DREF, uh, published in Lancet and done in eight European countries with hypothesis thus performing an hysteroscopy prior to starting an IVF cycle improve the life birth rate in red patients and a conclusion a concluding that hysteroscopy after repeat IVF failure doesn't significantly uh, improve subsequent IVF cycle outcome uh, and can't be routinely recommended. So, uh, in, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, routine hysteroscopy should not be uh, routinely performed in all patients undergo undergoing IVF for the first time. Hysteroscopy for IVF may be performed in patients undergoing their first IVF uh, if suspected uterine lesions based on history, uh, symptomatology, and ultrasound finding. Routine hysteroscopy for all IVF cases should only be recommended when there is definite evidence uh, of benefit which uh, until now is lacking. Uh, endometrial points still need more randomized control trial to reach a definite uh, conclusion uh, and probable role of uh, uh, chronic endometritis and the uterine microbiome which may have a, po uh, a, a positive impact in RIF and uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. And thank you so much. I think all of you are very tired today and a long day here, so we decided to not to ask people to ask their questions.